dismiss with all the formalities. Let me say, hello, hi, how you doing? I'm uh, just what he said. That's where I'm from, and that's who I am. Let's get into the Bible, all right? Uh, take your Bibles and open up uh, to the book of Proverbs. You've had memory verses from there, uh, one for this month and given another one for next month. You can open it up to um, uh, the early part of Proverbs, and then I'll zero you in exactly on where we're going in just a moment. The book of Proverbs, uh, toward the beginning, and then let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for Sunday school. I thank you for the chance, Lord, in the uh, church, the format you've got for us to uh, gather together and uh, study your word, Lord, with your people. I pray as we get into it this morning that you might uh, open up our eyes and help us indeed to behold wondrous things out of thy law. Lord, work uh, through me. Uh, let uh, me not be an impediment to uh, the message of your word this morning. Uh, let none of us be a hindrance to what you've got to uh, show us. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this morning I want to introduce you to a subject. Um, yes. All right. I hit the mute button, but or hit the unthing button when it told me. Okay. Is that better? All right. Let, let's 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 try that again. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right. This morning. <laughs> Uh, I want to introduce you to a subject in the Bible. I say introduce you. I'm not um, assuming that none of you are aware of this topic. I, I trust that uh, a number of you are. Maybe all of you are. But I want to introduce it to you perhaps maybe uh, a little bit more intimately, a subject that is of paramount importance in the Scriptures, and that is the subject of uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Today, the world searches uh, science and history and sociology looking for wisdom. It studies philosophy. It studies psychology and various comparative religions trying to unearth the treasures of wisdom. Uh, the world observes our popular culture, and it scours the libraries of the world trying to discover... ...truth and the book of wisdom, and that is the Holy Bible... Uh, preserved for us in our King James Bible. Uh, you can search the world over for the truth, and sometimes young people do that. Sometimes they leave church and search the world over for the truth. Uh, from this corner of the world to that corner of the world, when it's all said and done, uh, they're going to find the answer was sitting right there in their lap all the time in their Bible. That's where the answer is. Now, this Bible, this uh, Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures, uh, is God's wisdom book. And it's, God's got it laid out in, in natural sections, starting with the, the law, and then going on into history, uh, poetry, the prophets, etc. And out of all the sections in the Bible, there's one section that rises up with a particular emphasis on wisdom. And that section would be uh, the books that are called the books of poetry. Those books are sometimes also called the wisdom books. That is Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. And out of all the books in the books of poetry, or the wisdom books, and out of all the books in all the books of the Bible, there is one book that rises above the rest to deal and emphasize the subject of wisdom, and that is the book of Proverbs, where I had you open uh, this morning. And out of all the verses in the book of Proverbs, there's one verse that rises up to emphatically show us the importance of the subject, and that is in Proverbs chapter 4. So if you would take a look there. And look with me in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 7. Proverbs 4 and verse number 7. Here's what it says. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. We'll direct our attention to the first part of that verse. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. First of all, he says it's the principal thing. Now, uh, the word principal in our English language, uh, there's two words that uh, sound the same or pronounced that way. One is uh, spelled um, with the ending of P-L-E. The other one is spelled like this one with the ending of P-A-L. When I was in um, grade school, they taught us the way to remember the difference between the two words was the principal of your school is spelled with the P-A-L because the principal of your school is, is your pal. None of us okay. believed that, but that's what they taught us, and I will say that I remembered it from that way. Now, why is the principal uh, spelled P-A? Why is he called the principal? Because he's the main guy in the school. He's the head guy. Uh, the buck stops there when it, as far as the rules uh, of the school. And so uh, that's what he means by, by the principal. The principal guy uh, in the school is, is the principal. He's the main guy. Now, when it comes to the Bible saying that wisdom is a principal thing, that's what it's telling us that it's the main thing. 
Uh, when, I, when I think of this, I often think of uh, a guy that uh, Brother Alport and I uh, knew from school, uh, an older gentleman who used to sit on the front row with uh, the Alports, and uh, it was Brother Homer. And Brother Homer would um, have a lot of, um, he would vocally participate, uh, but not to distraction in the services. Whatever he said, uh, he was kind of, kind of a guy who, um, he wasn't all there, uh, but he wasn't all gone either. And whenever he'd come up with something, it, it would be a gem. Uh, one time the offering's going, going and just out of the blue, he, he just gets up and turns around back to the crowd and says, the world didn't give it to me and it can't take it away. And uh, folks, was got a blessing out of it. But Homer, where you would say amen uh, to a good point message, Homer would say this. He'd say, that's the main thing. That's the main thing. And when I think about wisdom, folks, that's what it is according to the Bible. That's the main thing. Wisdom, the Bible says, is the principal thing. And then it goes on to say, therefore get wisdom. That is to say this. If wisdom is the principal thing, then you better make it your priority to go ahead and obtain it. Whatever it is, whatever it entails, whatever it uh, embodies, you better make it a priority to get a hold of it. God says wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, because it is, therefore, get wisdom. I'd like you to hold Proverbs and turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And if I have you turn to other places in uh, the Scriptures today, uh, if you would, if I don't say anything, just go ahead and hold Proverbs because we'll uh, be heading back there uh, time and again. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Wisdom is the principal thing. And another thing we're going to notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30, is that wisdom is personified in Jesus Christ. It says in verse number 30, 1 Corinthians 1, but of Him, speaking of Jesus... But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Christ Jesus is made unto us wisdom. Wisdom. Of him are ye in uh, Christ Jesus. Uh, of the Lord are we in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Christ has made wisdom unto us. Jesus Christ is the personification of wisdom. He is the embodiment of wisdom. Uh, to watch Him, could we have done so on this uh, earth, would have been to watch wisdom. And, but to watch Him as we watch His life unfold in the Scriptures is to watch and to observe uh, wisdom in action. To hear Him uh, was to hear wisdom. As we hear Him speaking from His Word, uh, it is us hearing wisdom as we see it in the life uh, of an individual. And so for you to have wisdom, the first thing you've got to have is Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot have the wisdom of God without having Jesus Christ. I ought to point out at this point that according to the Scriptures, there are two types of wisdom. There is the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness with God. There is the, the, the wisdom that, that descendeth not from above, that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. It is the world's wisdom, which seems to make sense, but lends itself to a licentious or sinful lifestyle. And then there's the wisdom of God, where the wisdom from on high, the Bible says, is first pure, then peaceable. It's pure. That is, it's going to lead to a, a, a clean life. A holy life. That's what the wisdom from on high will do. So we speak of wisdom. We are speaking, obviously, of the wisdom of God. That wisdom which is from on high and comes from uh, above. So, according to 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus Christ, He's the personification of wisdom. Folks, without Jesus Christ, you've got no wisdom. You've got none. Here in 1 Corinthians 1, look at 1 Corinthians 2. Where it says in verse 14, But the natural man, that's a person that doesn't have Jesus Christ. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The person without God, without Jesus Christ, doesn't have any wisdom. The next verse says, But he that is spiritual uh, judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. The spiritual man is going to have some more insight. But the natural man can't make sense out of the things uh, of the Bible. Uh, turn to Revelation chapter 5. I'm saying, first of all, in regard to wisdom here, uh, you need Jesus Christ, who is the personification of wisdom, if you are to obtain the wisdom of God. Revelation chapter 5. We have the wisdom of God, of course, revealed to us in the Scriptures. And the key to unlocking the Scriptures is, first and foremost, the Lord Jesus. Revelation chapter 5. Uh, notice verse number 1. It says, And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, like what you've got in your hands, written within, and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book 
and to loose the seals thereof. Folks, we have a book, and sometimes we look at the words of those books, and they are obscure. We need somebody to open it for us. It says in verse 3, And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Now wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now, in addition to its doctrinal and prophetical uh, context, listen, this book shows you who opens up the book of God. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want this book to become open to you, you first and foremost need Jesus as your Savior. Secondly, you need to maintain a good relationship uh, with Him. So, uh, Jesus is the personification of wisdom. Go back to Proverbs with me. We started in Proverbs 4. This time, go to Proverbs 2. And let's take a, a look, begin to take a look at the process for obtaining wisdom. Now, I said Proverbs 2. Let me, let me first of all quote you a famous uh, portion of Scripture from Proverbs 9, verse number 10, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says it also in Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is the fear of the Lord that, first of all, leads a person to want to get saved. Because he recognizes he's got to stand before God, and God takes the rules, and if you don't line up with, with the Lord, you're in trouble. That's what a person realizes. It's the fear of the Lord. And then the fear of the Lord is also what causes us to want to live right and to get right uh, with God. So that starts the process toward salvation and toward right living. Now, Proverbs chapter 2 the practical process of obtaining wisdom. Uh, let's look at it beginning in verse number 1. Proverbs 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words. Let's stop right there. We're going to lead up to a, a process that's going to end with God giving wisdom. So, in leading up to that process, the first thing we see is we're going to, we're going to see some conditions. My son, if. Uh, wisdom is not automatically given to you just because you're saved. It is available to you, but there's going to be, have to be some effort that you have to put for. So there's going to be, have to be some ifs. We start off with if. You see in verse number 1, we're going to, we're going to see some more ifs, like in verse 3 and verse 4. And then we're going to get um, in verse 5, a then. I like the computer language, if you mess with that. If, then. You, if this happens, then this is going to happen. Well, if this happens, then verse 5 is going to take place and verse 6 is going to take place. So, we, we need to see what we need to do. And if we do this, then we're going to obtain the wisdom of God. We're going to be, be heading that direction. My son, if thou wilt receive my words. Number one, then you need to receive the word of God. Now, you can come to church and you can, you can even um, uh, get in the place where you're going to listen to the scriptures and not actually receive them. In Acts chapter 17, verse number 11, the Bible says that the Bereans were more noble than the people in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. You've come today and it's a, it's a blessing to see you here. And I'm glad that you're here in Sunday school. What I hope that you've come with is readiness of mind to receive the scriptures. I hope that your mind is ready to get something from God. I hope that you're excited about opening up your Bible and, and having whoever it is that comes up here, uh, uh, whether this be this week or the next, uh, give you something from the word of God. That's the best way to come to church. Ready to get something. Uh, ask, having asked God to give you something from the, from the Bible. And it, it says that you, they, the people in Th uh, Thessalonica or the people in Berea were more noble than the ones in Thessalonica because they received the word with all readiness of mind. And then you know what he said after that? And searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Here's how they did their Bible study. They come uh, to the service. They would be ready to hear the word of God, chomping at the bit. You know, come on, uh, preacher, give me something. And they would, then they would take what they heard, heard, go home, and then we continue to study it at home. And, and just confirm and, and enjoy the things that God had uh, taught them and the Lord had shown them. If you want to obtain the wisdom of God, that's, that's step number one in the process that's laid out in Proverbs chapter 2. If thou wilt receive my words. So again, you, you note Acts chapter 17 verse 11 right along there with that. Second thing he said is, and hide my commandments with thee. This probably reminds you of another verse that's uh, similar. Psalm 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hidden mine heart that I might not what? Sin. That I might not sin against thee. 
Thy word have I hid in mine heart. <clears throat> we'll often use that to um, emphasize the importance of memorizing Scripture. Occasionally somebody will point out that um, just memorizing it in your head doesn't get it into your heart. That doesn't mean that it's a bad thing to memorize it in your head. Matter of fact, this verse right here shows you that it's a good thing. Because in this verse, he doesn't even say hide in your heart. He says, hide my commandments with thee. Look, if you'll get them in your head and, and, and keep sin out, okay, the, the nat natural spiritual gravity will take it from your head down into your heart. It does that with bad things, doesn't it? Get bad things in here, bad things tend to get down here. So you get good things in here, and they're going to tend. To, it's going to tend to work its way down here. In fact, you're going to have to work hard to keep it out of your heart. If you get it in your head. And some people do that foolishly, but uh, but you want to get it in your head. So so memorize some scripture. One of the keys to memory to um to getting the wisdom of God. Go ahead and and learn this book. Commit some things to memory. Hide them with you. Hide them with you. You hide the scriptures with you. You get it in your mind and, and uh, then get it in your heart. You can have some good times of Bible study when you don't even have access to your Bible. Because maybe you're, you're at work doing your job or uh, maybe you're driving down the road and it's not a good idea to drive and try to read the Bible at the same time. <laughs> So, so you, you, can, you can meditate on the Scriptures if you get it up there in your head, and, and that's one of the keys to, 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 to just mingling in your mind with the wisdom of God. Hide them with you. Hide my commandments with thee. Verse 2, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. All right? Incline thine ear. That is, when wisdom is being spoken, you point your ear in that direction, if you will. Really what you've done by coming to Sunday school this morning in a church where you knew the Bible was going to be taught is you've inclined your ear unto wisdom. Next week when you come to hear Pastor Shapiro and he's going to preach and teach you from the Word of God and you show up here, what you're doing is you're inclining your ear to wisdom. You're pointing it in that direction so that you have the opportunity to, uh, to obtain it, to incline your ear, to listen, and to pay attention. Again, with all readiness uh, of mind. So you go to a place where you can hear the Word of God. So that thou incline thine ear into wisdom. And then look what he says in the next part. <clears throat> and apply thine heart to understanding. So not only to hear it, but to do it. Well, you run this with James 1.22. I think that's where it is. Where he says, but uh, it says, be not um, just uh, hearers of the word, but, but be doers. You're to be doers of the word, not just hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. It's a deceptive thing if we just listen and listen and listen and never do anything about what we hear. We think we're making progress, but we're not. We're just kind of like spinning our wheels in mud. You ever get mud around here? <laughs> Where we live, we get uh, not only mud, we get snow. And you get stuck in the snow. You can you put your foot down on the gas, and you're tired of spinning, 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 spinning. You get nowhere. You waste a lot of gas. You know, waste a lot of energy. Get a lot. Get frustrated. That's where a lot of Christians are. Putting your foot on the gas to go, and you're just spinning your wheels because you're hearing it, but you're not applying it. This is we talk about applying what we've learned. That's what the Lord's telling you right here. Apply thine heart to understanding what God has taught you from the Bible. Put it into your life. Take it outside the walls of the door and the doors of this church and, and make it be in your life every day. This isn't just about Sunday. This is about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This is your life, what you get from the book in this church. So, you ought to incline, incline your ear and apply your heart to wisdom. Look at verse 3. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, that's praying for wisdom. And praying for it with some intensity. Fervently, earnestly. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man uh, availeth much. You need to pray for wisdom. James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. James uh, said, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Any of you. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. Doesn't matter if you're male, female. Any of you. Any one of you that understands what I'm saying. You can pray for wisdom. Toward the top of your prayer list, whether you have it written down or in your, your mind, uh, you ought to put wisdom. It's something that you ought to, if you don't pray for right now, you ought to begin to pray for. You need it You need it to get through life. You need it in everyday situations. Uh, you need the wisdom of God to make right choices and decisions. And our life, uh, the results of our life really are based on series of choices or individual choices that we make. You need wisdom to make the right choices and decisions. Especially with so many other different voices telling us to, to go ways that are outside of the Scriptures. 
There's sometimes so many subtleties where, where this way it looks like it could be right and that way it looks like it could be right. And how can we know the difference? Well, you get in the book and you get on your knees and you say, God, give me wisdom. Help me to know what to do. Help me to know what to say. Help me to know uh, how, to, how to deal with this situation. Wisdom is what we need. The wisdom of God. And you can get it by, uh, by asking God for it. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which give it to all men liberally, and it shall be given him. And, and, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. He's not going to rebuke you or get mad at you for asking for wisdom. He wants you to ask for it. He says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. You need to believe that God is willing to give it to you. Him that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Wisdom is not just for, for preachers. Wisdom is not just for Sunday school teachers. Wisdom is not just for a few select people in church. It's for every church member. You can have it. You can have the wisdom of God if you'll seek after it like the Lord has taught you to and is teaching you to. If thou, he says in verse 3 then, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifts up thy voice for understanding. Get serious about it. Get, get down and say, Lord, I, I lack wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, Lord, tell them, I lack it. I need it. And then begin to pray. Look at the next verse, verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver. If thou seekest her as silver. You know, um, I read about a place in the Bible. I read, it, I read a place in the Bible about a woman who was um, seeking uh, something as silver. She, had, she, matter of fact, she was seeking silver. She lost something. In Luke chapter 15, this woman lost some silver. Let me just read it for you real quick. In Luke 15, verse 8. It says, Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece... Doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. Real quick, sweeps the house, gets, cleans that place up, and then seeks diligently. Diligently. Lord's a reward of them that diligently seek Him. And then it says, seek diligently what? Till she find it. She seeks it diligently till she find it. In other words, she, she, if we're applying this to wisdom, which we're to seek as silver, she opens up her Bible and reads, but she doesn't get anything out of it. So she doesn't say what some people say, well, I didn't get anything out of it, so I'm not going to read it anymore. No, she keeps on reading. And she keeps on studying. And she keeps her nose in that book until she gets something out of it. And uh, you may not get... Um, you may not get uh, all kinds of nuggets of wisdom falling down from heaven the first time you open the Scriptures and read it. But if you'll stay in it and stay in it and stay in it, there'll come a time when the windows of heaven will open. And God will pour you out a bunch of blessings from the Bible. Well, and sometimes He might give you something here and, and something there. But you just stay with it. You seek diligently until you find it. Don't give up on it. Because there's the answer is you don't go find them anywhere else. So you may as well just stay here in the wisdom book and keep on mining it until uh, you, you get uh, some wisdom. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Look, if you knew, if you knew there was treasure buried out in your backyard and you went home and started digging it and you didn't find it. And you dug till night and until you were worn out and you didn't find it. Uh, you just keep on going back. If you knew it was there, you keep on going back and digging and keep on going back and digging until you found it. And that's how you need to be with, with the wisdom of God. It's there. You just need to be persistent. Be patient with God. Has He not been patient with you? You can say amen there, even if it is just Sunday school. All right? Uh, Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 5. So you do all these things, if, 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 then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. <clears throat> For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of His mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Out of His mouth. What comes out of his mouth, same thing that comes out of yours, words. Only in his case, it's the Word of God. So out of this, out of his mouth, out of the Word of God, that's where you're going to find the wisdom of God. So that's, uh, that's part of the process there, then, uh, for seeking it. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you something else about the book of Proverbs that, that really helped to make it, for me, more alive. <clears throat> Reading through and, and noticing some things, I began to notice something showing up repeatedly. Look, first of all, in Proverbs 1, verse 8. We understand in verse 1, this is the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Look who he's addressing in verse, verse 8. He's, he's addressing his son. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Historically, that's Solomon addressing his son. Only child we read about Solomon uh, is um, Rehoboam, son. 
So probably he's addressing this to, uh, to Rehoboam. It's my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Uh, look at verse 10. He says, My son, if sinners entice thee, uh, consent thou not. Look at chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words. Look at uh, chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law. Look at 3.11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Verse 21. My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Look at uh, chapter 4 and verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. 5.1. My son. 6.1. My son. 7.1. My son. Etc., etc., etc. Numbers of times he's, he's saying, My son, he keeps repeating it. <clears throat> Somewhere along the line, this, this began to just stick out in, in, in my mind, and I, and I remembered something. I remembered in the New Testament, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I remember in 1 John 3 and verse number 2, the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And I remembered that this is the book of God, and I am the Son of God. And as I got reading through this thing, and I'd read like Proverbs 4.20, My son, attend to my word, suddenly it was like God, my Father, talking directly to me, his son, about his words. My son, attend to my words. Look at chapter 4, verse 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father. According to Galatians 3.26, you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. I am a son of God. I am a child of God. And what I am hearing here in the book of Proverbs is indeed not only historically the instruction of a father to a son, but spiritually the instruction of my father to me, his son, teaching me how to get through life. And that's what it is for you as well. This is a very personal book and a very pertinent book uh, to, to you as a New Testament child of God. And this opened up the book of Proverbs to me even more and made it even more precious uh, as I, I look at it now as God, my Father, talking directly to me, His Son. Go to chapter 3, Proverbs 3. Look at how precious wisdom is. Proverbs 3, verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Which, let me say this. You, you could use some happiness in your life, could you? Happy is a man that finds wisdom. I find God people sometimes who who ought to be the happiest people on earth give a show in their countenance of being some of the most miserable folks on this earth. A, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, right? So I know sometimes we're happy down inside, but look, every once in a while it's going to creep out and break its way onto your face if you're really happy. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to put on a fake smile. I'm saying there will be a real one that will come out this way. Make the corners of your mouth go this way. So he says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. I'm all for happiness. I remember a friend of mine, young, young man, told me one time, well, God never promised us happiness. He promised us joy. Well, I thank God. God promised us joy, but he also did promise us happiness. That's a whole other message, but here's one of the points. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. That's a promise of happiness right there. I find wisdom, I get happiness. And the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it, what you can obtain, what it will produce in your life. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. What I can gain from wisdom is better than what I can get from silver. That's money. That's, that's stuff that will get me stuff down here on this earth. And the gain thereof than fine gold. She, wisdom, is more precious than rubies. Watch the next statement. And believe your Bible. And all the things... Thou canst desire are not to be compared unto. You may not be able to, to just pinpoint and define exactly what wisdom is. You may not be able to reach out and grab a hold of it other than grabbing a hold of this book right here. But, but some of it may seem intangible to you. But I'm going to tell you something. If you'll get it, you'll ask God for it and seek it. God says that everything that you can desire isn't even worthy to be compared with wisdom. The wisdom of God. All the things thou canst desire. There's some, some pretty impressive things that we could desire down here in this earth. And none of it's even worthy to be compared with the wisdom of God. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that, look, look at this, retaineth her. You get happiness when you find wisdom. You keep happiness when you keep wisdom. You've got to retain it. You've got to hang on to it. Look at chapter 4, verse 5. 
get wisdom, get understanding. Notice the next three words. Forget it not. Don't forget what you've learned at church. Don't forget what God's shown you in your Bible reading and in your Bible study. Hang on to that stuff. Because when you're going through problems and you're miserable, uh, you probably have already learned the answer as to how to get out of it and how to deal with it. you just got to gotta go back and remind yourself. Hang on to that thing. Lay hold on eternal life. Obtain wisdom. Retain wisdom. And forget it not. In Proverbs 4 here, look at chapter 7 where we started, or verse number 7, I mean. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 where we started. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Once again, it's the main thing. Look at verse 8. Exalt her, wisdom, and she shall promote thee. That's how you get ahead in the Christian life. Genuinely. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Look at verse number 9. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. So you see what the wisdom will do for you? It will give you a crown of glory. Do you realize that's the same term that's used in 1 Peter chapter 5 as one of the rewards that's available at the judgment seat of Christ? Crown of glory. Same term. In the New Testament, in, in teaching on the judgment seat of Christ, it's often called the shepherd's crown or the pastor's crown because it's about this. It's given to the shepherd that feeds the flock and not as the Lord over God's heritage, etc., etc. It's given to a good pastor. Shepherd's crown. But I want to tell you, it is not only a reward that a pastor can get. Because according to this, you obtain this for getting wisdom. And this book of Proverbs is just for pastors. If, if any of you lack wisdom, I want to tell you folks, you can obtain this crown of glory at the judgment seat of Christ. I am saying that wisdom will help you to obtain eternal rewards. That's why it is more precious than rubies. That's why all the things that, that can be compared to are not to be desired. Because it will help you both now and forever. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I, I'm a pastor, so I'm, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to just um, try to keep that crown for myself. If, if God says other people can get it, but he, it's a crown of glory. Same term. It's amazing. So watch this a little bit further. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, so she deliver uh, unto thee. Go to Proverbs 8. Proverbs chapter 8. The context of what we're about to look at is, is wisdom. You'll see that in verse number 1. Doth not wisdom cry? Verse number 5. O ye simple, understand wisdom. Hey, that's good that we can, we can get that, huh? And ye fools, be of an, of an understanding heart. Uh, verse number 10. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that, that may be desired not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and so forth. It's talking about wisdom again. That's the context. Verse 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Wisdom says she loves them that love her. God, God, God I believe, is intrigued with people that are intrigued with Him. God's intrigued and, and, and appreciates people that appreciate His book. I love them that love me, and they that those that seek me early shall find me. Two things about that. Number one, you ought to seek him in er, seek him early in life. Remember, remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Don't wait till you get old some days. Oh, then I'm going to start finding, getting a hold of God and reading the Bible and studying and serving God. No, start where you're at. You don't love the Lord now. What makes you think you're going to love Him then? Number two, it's a it's a profitable thing to seek the Lord early in the day to start your day in the book. Even if you cannot do the bulk of your Bible reading and prayer in the morning, it's a good thing to have some. Now, some of you, maybe, maybe in your life, you don't have time uh, to have a full breakfast in the morning. But what you do is you, uh, you grab something just to sustain you so you can eat later on. You, may, you, you need to do that if you don't have time to have a full spiritual breakfast. Get something to get you going. Don't wait till you've already messed up the day. Get something to get your spiritual man come alive. Amen. So he says, he says, they that seek me to find me. Here's what I want you to see in verse 18 in relationship to these eternal rewards. He says, riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Why don't you look at that little, little term, durable riches. All right, hold your place here and go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter number 6. John 6. John chapter 6. Verse 27. Jesus said, Labor not, John 6, 27, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. 
Endure. Something that will endure to everlasting life. That's durable. In, in Proverbs, that's durable riches. Something that will last beyond this life and will abide for eternity. That's what wisdom will provide for you. Back to Proverbs, or Proverbs 8. It will provide durable riches. Riches and honor are, are, with, uh, are, are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness and uh, in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Sometimes take a look in Colossians chapter 3, verse 24, where the Lord extends and offers to you the reward of the inheritance. It's an eternal reward. Beyond salvation, God offers us rewards, eternal riches. So he says, I lead in the way of right, or I, verse 21, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Wisdom will help you then to obtain your spiritual inheritance. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Watch it. And I will fill their treasures. Treasures? Matthew chapter 6. Uh, Jesus said, Lay not for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. He said, I'll fill your treasures. Wisdom will give you durable riches and treasures and, and, and help you to have a, a profitable return at the judgment seat of Christ. What a wonderful prospect. Wonderful uh, thing is, uh, is, is laid out for you. This thing about wisdom. I would again exhort you to put it at the top of your prayer list and, and begin regularly to ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Uh, on a daily basis and then numbers of times throughout the days you face situations where you've got to make a choice. You've got to, to deal with the situation. God, give me wisdom to deal with that situation. Lord, and, and then it's just in general in prayer. Lord, let me get a hold of the wisdom of God. Get serious about it. Earnest. Intense even. Uh, cry aloud as, as he, he indicated in Proverbs chapter 2. Maybe shed some tears because you don't have the wisdom that you need. Just get serious about it and God will get serious about giving it to you. As he said in verse uh, uh, chapter 7 and verse number, or chapter 4 verse number 7, Proverbs Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, get it.